This riff brings me back to that British wave of heavy metal. Of course, we're thinking about bands like Maiden and Judas Priest. I'm also thinking about a band called Angel Witch. How many people remember that band? They had some pretty cool stuff. We're going to jump right into this lesson, though. This is a really cool and fun lesson to play, and you can expand all over the place with this riff, by the way. We're going to get to that, but do hang around till the end for our usual guitar chat. Let's play the riff out in the open, and you're going to be playing this in a few seconds here, and then I'll break everything down note for note. Now, there are a few things that make this riff super, super easy. So first off, we are in the key of A minor. I'm in standard tuning. You guys already know that. And the two chords that this riff is based on are A or A minor, because we're in the key of A minor, but the A power chord, if you will, and an F. So this right here. Now, I say that because it just makes it easier to kind of wrap your head around things. Like, okay, I get it. So if somebody were playing that rhythm right there, you could be playing this and it would fit. All right, and I really didn't mean to include all that, but sometimes I like to throw in these little things as I'm thinking through them. So I hope these little extras help. I hope it doesn't throw you off too much. But anyway, this riff is super easy because number one, on the A string, we're only playing on the A and D strings, by the way, okay? On the A string, there are only two notes we're concerned with, okay? And that is the seventh and eighth fret. We're halfway done with the riff, and you might be thinking, well, Jason, there are some more notes. Sounds like a lot. Actually, it's not a lot. There, there are only three notes you're going to be playing on the D string, and those notes are going to be 7, 9, and 10. All we have to do now is just put all of those notes together, the two notes on the A string, the three notes on the D string. Very simple. And guys, I, I like to break things down. I like to simplify things. What's the, what's the simplest way we can look at this? And there we have it. Two notes on A string, three notes on the D string. All we need to do now is just apply the picking method. Now, first of all, I'm playing all downstrokes. Doesn't mean that you can't play alternate picking style. You can do that if you want. You can do whatever you want, guys. I, I always encourage you to do that anyway. You guys know that about me now. Hey, take this and run with it. But I am I am down picking here, okay, all the way through. Now we're actually starting out with a higher note. So we're gonna start on the D string and we're gonna bar. I'm barring the seventh fret across the A and D strings here with my first finger there. So we're gonna pick that very first note on the D string, the seventh fret, and then we're gonna palm mute that note, the seventh fret, on the A string there. We're gonna palm mute that twice, okay? And then we're gonna do that. After that, we're going to go to the next note. We're gonna go back and forth between strings, okay? We're gonna go to the next note on the D string, which is gonna be the ninth fret. And before we go to that next fret on the 10th fret, D string, we're gonna sneak a little palm mute on that other string, but we're gonna maintain that note all the way through, okay? So hopefully that made sense. So as you're playing that seventh fret on the A string there, and as you're playing those other notes, that note is being consistent throughout this, okay? So the only, the only finger movement you have is on the D string. So let me play it normal speed, and then let me play it slow, okay? <laughs> Pretty simple. Now, all we're going to do, there's only one slight little change here. You know that note that we kept consistent the whole time on the A string, that seventh fret? All we're gonna do is just move up to the eighth fret. Now, I play that with my middle finger here, 
and it gives you this sound. It is time for our guitar chat, but real quick, if you do not have my free Metal Riffs and Licks practice guide, grab a copy of that. This guide has literally helped thousands of guitar players out there on my YouTube channel, so thank you guys for getting that. Now, I do pitch my online courses as you go through this, okay, but you're not obligated to buy anything from me. You're still going to get the guide free even if you don't get one of my courses, so that link is in the description of this video. I think I talked about this in the last lesson that I did, you know, the simple, uh, the core lesson you know we're just playing some chords and letting those things ring out well this lesson of course was a little bit more complex just because of the finger movement involved however what did we do what was our, our kind of like our key element throughout this lesson it was simplifying the way to play this hey we've only got two notes on this string and that one note stays consistent each time before you go to the next next string we only have three notes right even though we're going back and forth there's a picking strategy there of course but we simplified it in the beginning i think when you do this when you just simplify things kind of look at it from a bird's eye view if you will it's like how can i just break this down okay and that's what i really try to do in my lessons here and it's not that this riff was super complex it wasn't but guys you know what a lot of riffs aren't. They might sound complicated because there's a lot of picking strategies, which that's, you know, that's in itself, that can be complex, right? The picking strategy, the going back and forth between the two strings, you know, that might be one of those techniques that you just need to practice more, right? Going back and forth between the two strings, one string's palm muted, another string's not, right? Doing that. So all these different things that make up these riffs, really, if you break them down by little components, just bite-sized pieces, I think it makes things a lot easier to learn. So I just wanted to bring that point up because you may be trying to learn some riff that it just sounds complicated. Break it down a little further, okay? Break it down piece by piece, even by technique. Like I said, if you need to just practice going back and forth between the strings before you start adding the notes, well, that's okay, do that. But just kind of just kind of break everything down into small bite-sized chunks so you're not trying to like eat the entire steak in one mouthful. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I'm about to cook a steak, by the way, I'm pretty hungry. Actually, at the time of filming this video, uh, I filmed this before I left, but I'm actually in Thailand right now. Of course, if you guys are following me on social media, you'll see some pics and stuff out there. So I'll be having some good videos for you from Thailand. But yeah, that's where I'm at at the time of this video. I had to pre-record these so you guys would have the lessons. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that it helped you. That's the goal of all of my lessons on here. Hey, and if it did, please give this video a thumbs up. That really helps my channel. I appreciate that. And make sure you subscribe to my channel, guys. Until next time, as always, keep it metal and keep playing music. <laughs>